All right, welcome back to the channel. I'm doing a little series here of some of my favorite assets it's because of the New Year's sale happening in Unity right now to the end of the year. Um, you might be struggling figuring out, hey, I have so much money, but what's worth investing in? Um, this is one of the first things I ever purchased from Unity Asset Store. Um, I may have even gotten this before I got Playmaker, which is the visual scripting tool I use to make all of my games. And this is Malber's Animation Animal Controller. And what's really cool about this tool is you don't need to code at all. It does help to have some experience in Unity because when I first started using this tool, I was still very new to Unity and I didn't know how to look in the hierarchy and the inspector. And there's a lot going on in this. Um, you can compare this tool to other AI tools on um, the asset store. Um, I would kind of compare this to Emerald AI. But you might be like, well, Philip, I'm not interested in animating animals. You could use this for non-animal characters as well. Um, it was originally originally geared towards animals, but you could do humanoid characters as well. Um, it's not just a matter of controlling the AI of the animal itself, but it's got health systems, attack systems, patrolling systems. It's really smooth. It's got a great UI interface. Um, I actually didn't get this one right away. I think I had, I think I bought his bear asset first because I wanted to have a bear in my disc golf game because um, my disc golf game was called Redis Ridiculous Disc Golf. And so when you're in the woods throwing a Frisbee, um, you could potentially get eaten by a bear. And so I actually bought one of his bear packs and it's really nice. So Malibur's Animations has lots of really cool stuff, but he does an excellent job of just creating these beautiful characters, these animal characters, and he's got them fully rigged. And as far as I understand, they all work with his animal controller. Um, if by the end of this video, or if you're already ready to get the animal controller, hold up because um, at least one of his assets includes the animal controller and that's his horse anima set pro. So if you want somebody to be able to ride a horse, um, I think it works for like dragons and stuff too. You can use this tool for that as well. 30 bucks, um, pick that up rather than getting the animal controller and then find out later you don't need the animal controller because it's built into horse anima set. So it's really nice that he puts that in his description for this as well. I don't have the horse anima set, um, but I've heard lots of great things about it. So let's take a look at um, the animal controller and some things that we can do. All right, so this gives us a good example of what this does. All right, so I'm just gonna hit play and he's got a little, I think it's a wolf and he's got really amazing prefab set up to make it easy for you to control. All right, so like these are like trigger points. So right now I'm point to clicking and when you get into the trigger point, um, it says press E to drink, but it looked like he was doing it automatically, so I don't think I have to press E. Um, but he's got a very nice point-to-click movement system. And you can see the animations and everything are all built in. Um, like this one does triggers an animation. All right, so we can go take a look at... Oops, what do I do? Let's go look at some of the uh, prefabs and whatnot and how this is set up. So he has these things called zones, where... Um, it's basically a, a waypoint or a, a trigger that if the animal walks through it, they do something. So here there's like a zone script. All right, and you can tell it what to do. So you really wanna read through the documentation. It doesn't take a single line of code, but it's a very huge complex system, but it lets you do all sorts of things that pretty much anything you'd want to do with uh, an AI of an animal or even a person. Um, so you can create actions, you can create modes like patrol modes and stuff. All right, so here we have um, a scene where he's got some waypoints set up. And um, he's got a health bar and stamina, and this is all built into the wolf. All right, so whatever your animal is, you can add um, an input system. So you don't need to create your own input system. You have an input system set up. So here, another wolf has found me while patrolling and now they're attacking each other. But I can move around with WASD, all right? And that's all just built into the Malibur's input system. Not only does he have the controller set up already for the animal, but you can also name what each thing is. You can do what type of input it is. So maybe it's a key or maybe it's some other type of input. And then you can choose what the value of that key is. All right, it's just, it's amazing being able to have this just right here in the inspector to make it real easy to change um, the way that you interact. Um, we can play this one more time here. All right, so I'm gonna walk, move my fox, my wolf over here. I don't really like what my camera's doing right now. Um, my computer's also being, oh, it's because, is it mouse look? Yeah, that's what's happening, it's mouse look, okay. 
So there I am running. If I hold shift, I'll sprint. If I hit space, I can jump. Um, if I want to attack this guy, it looks like it's um, mouse zero. So we just click to attack, and there they go. He's attacking. You can see my health bar up in the top. You can see what my stamina is. I think that's for sprinting. Oh, boy, I don't like that mouse lift. Though. I would totally change that. There we go. And we kill the other fox. So this entire system manages your health, the A's high's health. You can go in here. Um, in the animal itself, we go to general. And this should be... Where do we change his health? Oh, stats. It's in the stats section. Right here. So we have you can choose what the value for stamina should be, what the value should health for health should be. Um, and it should update, I believe, if I remember right, while I'm using this. So if I start running. Boy, I hate that mouse lift though. Alright, and sprint. We're burning the stamina. You can see in the inspector now that value going down. You can see on the screen the UI bar changing as well. Alright, and all this can be done without code. So in the Malbers folder. You want to go to the common folder and then the prefab. And so there's AI stuff. So these are like off mesh links and waypoints and stuff like that. So if I wanted a waypoint, oh, I should probably be in the scene view. Uh, don't do it. Scene view. All right. So here I am in the scene view. Um, like if I wanted uh, the, the AI, not my player, this, this wolf is the player. Um, this AI over here. We click on this AI wolf. All right. We see our animal. We can see the different states they can have. And we see where it's aiming from with its heads transform, its point click. And here we have AI control. This is the movement logic for the animal. And right now its target is to just be alone. And we can do auto set next target, um, but we can also create waypoints. And he's got built-in waypoints here with all the logic you need and boom, there's a waypoint now. So I showed you the wrong thing here. What I wanted to show you is if you look over there, not on the, where I, you're gonna see my mouse click on the on arrive, do things, list is empty, but right above that, you can see where it says next waypoints. That's where you can set up so that each waypoint knows where it's going next. Um, otherwise, he's not gonna know, you can set his starting, the AI, you can set their starting waypoint. And then on that starting waypoint, here in the inspector, you say what the next one is. And that's how they can keep looping around and around and around. His mouse. Gizmos were not. There we go. I like the, the gizmos he has set up for his waypoints. Okay. So here you can see like where he's looking. Um, so if I click on him and if I go down to the control, so it's first target, it's set to just be to waypoint a one, which is alone. So it's just, it's targets going to go there and that's all it's going to go to. And then it's going to be done. Um, we can, I could easily change that though, by clicking on him and changing that waypoint to be the one I created here. And I can put there. Um, you can have different events on like on position arrived, on target arrived, on new target set. So down here in the animal's brain, you can have different states that they're in. And so we have it set to remain in this patrol state. So there's these states that they have in the brain folder. I can see what this patrol state does. And it has different tasks. So it's gonna patrol, it's going to set the speed to walk and then set the stance to default. And what it's going to do is its first thing is it's going to look for the player. If it finds them, it's going to attack and kill the player. Otherwise, it's going to remain in its current state of patrolling. Um, so there's lots of stuff to read in the documentation here, but I just want you to show, show you that he has this all in the uh, common folder. In the prefabs, um, there's the AI stuff for walking. And one thing that's kind of cool is he got this mobile input button so he actually has some buttons that you can utilize if you need some mobile input buttons that you would want to put on a canvas all right um do we see those on my canvas no i don't have it set up to be on there but there's different mobile input buttons he's even got tracks um so, so tracks that could um display as the animal's walking if you want some tracks to display their foot tracks all right, this big one here, the prefabs are different zones. Like this is an eat zone. So there's different zones. There's zone actions that um, if you just want something to happen, 
like let's say um, you just have some AI doing things, rather than programming them to do things when they get somewhere, you can just put these zones that automatically trigger your AI to do something when they get there. Um, like zone crawl, maybe they get, they're get they patrolling to like a small cavern area and you want them to crawl through it, just put this right at the opening and they'll start to crawl. Um, if you want them to go eat by some food, go place this eating zone where that food is. Um, all sorts of, these zones make it so easy to set up interactions with your AI without actually having to program anything. But of course you can go into these and change all the different settings for the zones. And in the documentation, it teaches you how to create different parts of the logic, whether it be the brain pieces like we looked at earlier, these zones and stuff like that. So the documentation is very well documented. Um, check it out. It's just such a complex system that can do so much without you needing to write a single line of code. Um, and I've recently gotten to the point to where um, I love Playmaker so much. I've been creating custom actions for different things. Um, I just made a custom action pack for Emerald AI, um, which is a great system. Um, if you're interested in Emerald AI, it's also on the half off sale, but I'm not going to cover, do one of these videos in Emerald AI. Um, but I did build a Playmaker integration package. So if you use Playmaker and you want to use Emerald AI, I do have a Playmaker package for that up on the, the asset store. Um, and I also have it on my H page. Um, but I was going to make some custom actions for Malbers, their animal controller. And it's just, I started doing it and it's just not needed. Like anything that you could imagine that you would want to do. It's just, it's already there. It's already part of all the systems setting up triggers. I couldn't think of any use case where I would want to use a playmaker action for any of these things. I mean, the rare instance where I would want to be able to, um, get information from or talk to, you know, I could just in an FSM, I can just, you know, drag, I don't know, from the component on, and I could just get a property or I could set a property, you know, I can just get a property, find the property I want to get, and then I can use that in my FSM. And it's just, it just seemed like I would have no use to actually write out because he's got an API and it's really well documented and I could write actions for it. But it's just not needed because he's taken every effort to make this as hands off as possible when it comes to code. Um, I hope this demo showed you just a little taste of what this can do. Um, he's got some great videos, tutorials as well to make sure you get set up. It's a lot, but I encourage you if you get this asset, maybe before purchasing it, you know, watch the videos, see what all is involved to get it set up. Um, I mean, it's nice, long and detailed. Malibar's Animations Animal Controller is an excellent thing to pick up. But if you're interested in riding dragons or horses, instead get his Horse Anima Set Pro because that includes the Animal Controller. But also check out the rest of his page for all the other beautiful things um, that he has created. Uh, and I think most everything is 50% off on his stuff right now as well. Um, it's just... They're amazing. So go check out Malibur's Animation on the Unity Asset Store. I'll put affiliate links down in the description if you want to support the channel. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.